section 9.2, series and convergence. So in the previous section, we studied about sequences. In this section, we're going to study about series and um, the convergence of series. What do we mean by series? To be more precise, what do we mean by an infinite series? Well, an infinite series is an infinite sum of summands, each of which comes from uh, a sequence. So we have a sequence an, and we would like to add um, the terms, all of the terms of, of that sequence. So we talk about the series associated to the sequence. Okay. Sometimes we we talk we say just series, uh, but we, what we really mean is infinite series. Uh, throughout this chapter, we only deal with infinite series. All right. For short, we denote a series by this symbol, and what this symbol, what this thing is, it's read as sigma, and it means a sum. Um, so this is the sum of terms, each of which looks like a sub n, where n ranges from 1 to infinity. Okay, so one more time. This is read as the sum of a n, where the index n ranges from 1 to infinity. So uh, when n is 1, this becomes a1, and sigma means plus. So a1 plus the second term is a2, plus when n is 3, this becomes a3, plus a4, and so on and so forth. So this is a compact notation of this sum. Okay. And sometimes we just ignore um, um, the set where n lives, in this case from 1 to infinity. We just drop it and... Uh, we drop it whenever it's clear from the context where n lives, where the index lives. All right. Definition. Given a series, something like this, uh, we're going to denote by S sub n, for all n, we're going to denote by S sub n, uh, the nth partial sum associated to that series. And what do we mean by the nth partial sum? Well, the series is an infinite sum. When you truncate that at the nth term, so what, when you truncate this at the nth term, so you take a1 plus a2 plus all the way to a n, then I'm going to denote that sum by s sub n. And we're going to refer to that to that term as the nth partial sum. So what's the first partial sum? Is s1. And what's s1? It's just a1, it's the first term. What's the second partial sum? It's s sub 2, which means summation of a i, and i goes from 1 to 2. So it's one, a1 plus a2, and so on and so forth. So the nth partial sum is the sum of the first n terms of the series. Okay. Now, if the sequence if the sequence created by the nth partial sum of that, of that series, I'm not talking about the sequence of the terms anymore, I'm talking about the, se the sequence of the partial sums associated to that series. If that thing converges, and we call that limit, um, let's say S, then we say that the big series that the big series is going to converge, and it converges to that number s. So we write this thing. Okay, so one more time. You have a series whose terms are, are coming from some sequence a n. We, we associate to this series a sequence uh, whose terms are the partial sums of that series. So the first term of that sequence is just a1. The second term of that sequence is a1 plus a2 because it's s2. The third term of the, the sequence is a1 plus a2 plus a3. That sum is the third term of that sequence and so on and so forth. 
if that sequence we understand when is uh, how to find uh, the limit of a sequence so we know if how to f uh, whether to de or to determine whether a sequence is going to converge or not if that sequence of partial sums converges say to a limit s then we say that the series is convergent as well and that, that, that the sum of the series, um, that infinite sum, is equal to S, which is the limit of the sequence uh, of partial sums. Okay? So, notationally, this is what we are writing. And what is S again? S is the limit of the partial sums. So, you can write, you can write, this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn. And what is Sn? Right? S is this limit. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm copying of Sn. And what's Sn? It's the sum of the first n elements of the sequence. Um, An, right? It's the sum of the first n terms of the series, n summands of the series. So this becomes sigma ai and i goes from 1 to n right correct um so the series is the limit so the series um is the limit of the sequence of partial sums okay I think I wrote it somewhere. Yeah, it's right there. So the series, the sum of a series, is the limit of the sequence of partial sums. This is exactly what we mean. Okay. All right. The number S is called the sum of the series. And if the series, if the sequence Sn is divergence, then we say that the series is also divergent. Okay. All right. Example one. Suppose we know that the sum of the first n terms of the series sigma n is this much. So suppose that the nth partial sum Sn is given by this. Then the sum of the series, the, the entire thing, is the limit of the sequence Sn, right, by definition. The sum of the series is the limit of the sequence of partial sums. So as such, we can write sigma a n, so I'm writing this, is equal to the limit of the nth partial sum, so s n. And you know what s n is in this case? It's this guy. So this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of this guy and this is uh, this is two-thirds right uh, we dealt with limits of sequences in the previous section in this example uh, we were given an expression for the sum of the first n terms but it's usually not easy to find some such an expression in the next example uh, we're gonna find we're gonna look at a famous series geometric series uh, for which we can actually find an explicit formula for the nth term and for the nth partial sum let's take a look at this uh, take a look at this series a the first term is a the second term is a times r so what did we do from the first to the second term we uh, we multiplied by r the third term is a r squared. So what did we go? What did we do from the second term to the third term? We also multiplied by r. The fourth term is this guy a r cubed. What did we do from the third to the fourth? We also multiplied by r, and we go the same way. So we're gonna assume that this pattern keep going. What is what is the pattern? Um, each term is obtained from the preceding one by multiplying by r. Right. 
and r is referred to as the common ratio because if you divide a term by its um, by the term right before it then the quotient is always r right this divide by the previous one is r a3 divide by the third term i should say divide by the second term is r and so on so the quotient between a term and its preceding one is r um, that's referred to as a common ratio because it's common to all of them all right and this series obviously i can write it as sigma each term looks like a r to power n minus one and n starts from one and it goes all the way to infinity so I'm, I'm also using this notation n bigger than or equal to one which means n starts at one and goes all the way to infinity so the first term is a times r to power zero so r to power zero is one uh, and then uh, you get a the second term is when n is uh, two so you get a times r to power two minus one so a times r and so on and so forth okay Let's try to find where the series is convergent. And once it's convergent, how about we find its limit? If r is 1, if this guy r is 1, then the nth partial sum becomes a plus a plus a plus a n times. And a plus a plus a n. This is n times, right? Um, I'm not going to write it, but it's understood. n times. a plus a plus a n times is n times a right and if n goes to infinity that guy is gonna go to either plus or minus infinity depending on the sine of a and as such sn sn the sequence of partial sums is divergent and hence diverge diverges to infinity and hence uh, the geometric series is gonna diverge in this case so if r is 1, the geometric series, if the common ratio is 1, the geometric series is going to be divergent. If r is not 1, if r is not 1, the nth partial sum is the first, the sum of the first n terms. So I'm going to stop at a r n minus 1, correct? Okay. And now let's multiply this guy by r let's multiply both sides of this of this equation by r we get r times sn equals this guy becomes r times a or a times r so i'm gonna start here this guy becomes a r squared so here this guy becomes a r cubed and so on the previous term which was a to power r a times r to power n minus 2 the previous term if you multiply by r it becomes a times r to power n minus 1 and this last term if you multiply it by r you get a times r to power n right so what did i do here i just multiplied to get the second equation i multiplied both sides by r and then if i subtract the second from the top uh, this becomes Sn minus Rsn, the left sides. And the right side becomes A. This is going to cancel with this. This is going to cancel with this. I'm subtracting. Remember, I'm subtracting the bottom ones from the top. Everyone here is going to cancel with everyone here. And then uh, this is going to cancel with this guy. Right? So all these, all these drop out and we are left with A minus ARN. We get this, correct? All right. And now if you factor out SN on this, uh, on the left side, uh, you get one minus R. And then since, since R is not one, since R is not one, I can divide by one minus R. And I get Sn equals this guy, which is the same as this if you factor out A, and divide by 1 minus R. Okay. All right. And uh, what did we study in the previous section? We studied, we also studied um, the sequence Rn. Remember the sequence Rn? 
it converges if and only if the absolute value of r is less than 1, which means if and only if r is between minus 1 and 1. Um, actually, it's not if and only if. It converges between minus um, So one more time. Rn in the previous section, we studied uh, that it converges as long as r, the absolute value of r, is between minus 1 and 1, including 1. This is the if and only if statement right but it converges to zero if and only if r is between minus one and one correct this is what we studied in the previous section so rn goes to zero uh, if and only if r is between minus one and one which means the absolute value of r is, is less than one and then as such sn goes to uh, to a over one minus r right because this guy goes to zero so the limit of sn becomes this guy so we can summarize it as, follow, as follows. Whenever this happens, which means the absolute value of R is less than one, the geometric series is gonna converge. Why? Because it's uh, sequ the sequence of its nth partial sum, uh, the sequence of its partial sums uh, is converging. And it's converg converging to this number S. So the series itself is gonna converge to this number. Okay, and this is whenever r is between minus 1 and 1. How do you remember this? Uh, what's a with respect to the, uh, to the series? a was the first term, right? So that guy is the first term, and r was the common ratio, remember? So the geometric series, when the common ratio in absolute value is smaller than 1, the geometric series is convergent to the quotient where the numerator is first term and the denominator is 1 minus the common ratio. All right, what are the other cases that we haven't considered yet? Um, R being smaller than or equal to negative 1 and R being bigger than 1 because we already talked about R being equal to 1. Well, if r is less than or equal to negative 1 or r is bigger than 1, this guy here, we showed it in uh, uh, 9.1, that this guy here, uh, is this sequence rn is divergent. And if this guy diverges, then sn is going to diverge. And if sn diverges, the series is divergent. So the geometric series diverges in this case. Correct? So we can summarize it as follows. And this is uh, this is the summary of what we just did in the second example. The geometric series uh, summation of um, a times r to power n minus one is convergent, provided the rate the common ratio is uh, has modulus sm uh, smaller than one, and its sum is the quotient, right? This quotient. First term, A, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. And otherwise, if this doesn't happen, doesn't happen um, the series is going to diverge. All right, example 3. Find, I'm talking about just example 3. Uh, find the sum of the geometric series 5 minus 10 over 3 plus 20 over 3 minus 40 div uh, divided by 27 plus and so on. Um, by so on, we mean that um, the pattern is preserved. Well, one moment's reflection shows that um, um, the, the common ratio, I mean, this is a geometric series with first term, first term 5, and common ratio is going to be how much? 2 over 3, right? Um, if you, um, what did you do from 5 to 10 over 10 over 3? Actually, minus 2 over 3. What did you do from here to here? You multiplied by 2 over 3. And what did you do from here to here? You also mu multiplied by negative 2 over 3. And what did you do from this term to this term? You also multiplied by negative 2 over 3. So such a, such a series is, um, as, as we defined it above, it's called geometric series. And they told us already with common ratio uh, negative 2 over 3 and with first term 5 right so what do we get here 
um, we can think about this as sigma 5 times negative 2 over 3 to power n minus 1 and n goes from 1 to infinity, right? I'm just following suit the way we represented uh, the geometric series here on the top. Okay. Double check. If n is 1, that term is 1 and the first term is 5. If n is 2, that exponent is 1 and this becomes minus 2 over 3 times 5 becomes the second term. And when n, n is 2, and when n is 3, um, uh, you're going to get this third term and so on and so forth. Okay, so what's the common ratio? It's negative 2 over 3. And that common ratio, that common ratio, uh, in absolute value is, uh, is smaller than 1. The minus 2 over 3 in absolute value is 2 over 3, which is smaller than 1. As such, the series is going to converge to this number. Okay, so let me write this for you. Let me actually make this, uh, let me make this thing a little smaller. Okay, so now I can say that this is equal to, let's zoom in. I can say that this is equal to the first term the first term, which is a, and this a is 5, right? So 5 divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is minus 2 over 3. Okay. And what happened here? Why, why this is okay? This is okay because a is 5 and r, the common ratio r, is equal to 2 over 3, which is smaller than 1, right? Correct. Okay. Very good. And what is this? Uh, what is this uh, quotient here? This quotient is, let's do it quickly. Downstairs is 1 plus 2 over 3. 1 plus 2 over 3 is 5 over 3. So 5 divided by 5 over 3, this is simply 3. Okay. So this sum, this whole thing, this sum is simply 3. All right. Example 4. Is the series this one convergent or divergent you can either i mean probably it would be best to list um, um, the elements of this of this series i mean when n is 1 this is going to be 4 times 1 so the first term is 4 the second term is going to be when n is 2 so it's going to be 2 to power 4 um, and 2 to the power 4 is 16, 3 times 1 minus um, 2, which is 1 third. So it looks like I'm going to get 16 over 3. This is the second term. And how did I go from the first to the second? I multiplied by 4 over 3, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be a geometric series whose first term is 4, as we found, and uh, with common ratio 4 over 3. Okay, if you don't want to list the elements, another way to see it is as follows. So this series you can see it as um, I mean, look at this. Two to power two to power uh, two to power twice n is the same as two squared to power n, right? This is the same thing as two squared to power n, which is four to power n, right? And four to power n. All right, let me keep it for a second. 
times 1 minus n, a 3 to the power minus 1 minus n. Um, this is the series. 4 to the power n, I can look at it as 4 times n minus 1. 4 times 4 to the power n minus 1. Correct? This is, I mean, if you multiply these guys, you just add the powers, you get back 4 to power n. And 3 to power 1 minus n, I can think about it as 1 divided by 3 to power n minus 1. Correct? Uh, how do you take something downstairs? You just multiply the exponent by negative 1. Correct? And if you multiply the exponent by negative 1, upon taking it downstairs, uh, this becomes minus 1 plus n, and minus 1 plus n is simply n minus 1. So you get this. And this is not hard at this point to see that this is the sum, the infinite sum, of 4 times 4 over 3 to the power n minus 1. Which is exactly as expected. This looks now closer to, uh, to the geometric series that we defined uh, here. This looks like sigma n going from 1 to infinity a r n minus 1, right? Check it. Sigma n goes from 1 to infinity a times r to power n minus 1. Correct? So this is a geometric series with first term 4 but the common ratio is 4 over 3. Common ratio is 4 over 3 means the common ratio is bigger than 1. Hence, the series is going to be a divergent series. Correct? So let's write this. So uh, this geometric series is divergent since its common ratio is bigger than 1. Correct? Namely 4 over 3. This is the common ratio. That's the common ratio. Correct? That's the common ratio we have in mind. Very good. Example 5. Write the number 2.317, so 17 bar, which means um, 2.317, and so on, as a ratio of integers. As a ratio of integers. Well, 2.317, okay, let me use a different color. 2.317 bar is the same as 2.3 plus 17 over 10 to power 3, right? Correct? Plus the next term is 17 divided by 10 to power 5, correct? Um, this becomes 0 0.3 zeros and 3 zeros and 17. And the next one becomes 17 divided by 10 to power 7. So plus 17 divided by 10 to power 7. Plus dot dot dot. Correct? So it's... If you, if you just focus on this part, this is a geometric series. This is a geometric series whose first term is 17 over 10 cube and whose common ratio is 1 divided by 10 to power 2. So 1 over 100 is the common ratio, right? Because you go from here to here by multiplying by 1 over 100. Likewise here, likewise the next one, right? And so on and so forth. And then you find the sum. This is a geometric series whose common ratio is smaller than 1 because it's 1 over 100. So certainly this is going to converge. And as such, you're going to be able to find this number. And once you find this number, you add it to 2.3. And you give yourself uh, 
that number 2.317 bar as a ratio correct that's that's the idea here so let's do it um so let's let's call this guy something how about we call it s let's find s so s is equal to the first term this is a geometric series so the s is going to be the first term and what's the first term 17 over 10 cube divided by 1 minus the common ratio which is 1 over 10 squared right this is the common ratio and let me highlight this so here i can do so because um the common ratio r is equal to 1 over 100 which is smaller than 1 right And this is the same as 17 over 10 cubed divided by 10 squared minus 1. This is 99 over 100. Okay. So that's going to be 17 over 990. Right? Because uh, 10 cubed um, divided by... 10 squared is going to be 10, but downstairs. So 17, 9, 9, 0. And then you add it to 2.3. This is the S guy. You add it to 2.3 and you give yourself that sum. So this becomes equal to 2.3 plus 17 over 9, 9, 0. 2.3 is 23 divided by 10, right? Uh, we can think about this 23 as 2.3 as 23 over 10. All right, and if you add them up, you should find 1147 divided by 495. Okay, so if you take a calculator and you divide these guys, you're gonna get exactly this. All right, example six, find the sum of the series, the series, where the absolute value of x is smaller than one. Notice that this series starts at zero this time, and so the first term is x to power zero. So uh, in, with series, we adopt the convention that x to power zero is equal to one, even for those x, when x is zero. So it's a convention. So the first term in the series is 1. And then uh, that's going to be a geometric series with common ratio x, right? Um, take a look at the series. What is the series? The series, as we said, the first term is 1. Again. By convention, with series, we take the following convention. x to power uh, 0 is 1, even for those x which are 0. Okay, so this is just a convention. Plus the second term, which is x squared. Uh, sorry, x to power 1, when n is 1. Plus this, the third term is x squared, plus x cubed, etc. Correct? All right, and this is clearly a geometric series and the common ratio is uh, x because from one term to the next, I'm multiplying by x. And what do you know about x here? You know that the modulus of x is less than one. And if the common ratio is an absolute value is less than one, the geometric series is gonna converge to this thing, correct? So that's going to be equal to, so this is going to be equal to, um, actually let me, let me write the details. So this is convergent 
since their common ratio is less than one. The common ratio and absolute value, the common ratio and absolute value is less than one. Correct? The common ratio is not the absolute value. The common ratio is x, but verifies this inequality, and as such, it's going to converge. What's the limit? So it follows that this sum this sum is going to be the first term. What's the first term in this sequence, in this uh, series? Is 1 divided by 1 minus the common ratio, right? 1 minus the common ratio. It's the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So first term is 1, it's the first guy, divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is x. So you get 1 over 1 minus x, which is the sum. Okay. All right. Example seven, show that the series, this one is convergent and actually find its sum. Well, this series is not, um, uh, it doesn't look like a geometric series. This is certainly not a geometric series. Uh, so we're gonna do it on our own. I'm trying to create a page here to actually do it on the second page. Okay. So this is not a geometric series, certainly. And uh, so we're going to be on our own and we're going to just uh, appeal to the definition of a convergent series, which means we're going to go and find um, the limit of, a, of the sequence created by the partial sums, right? Let's find actually what the par what the nth partial sum look like. Okay, so this is example seven. That's example seven. Okay, and uh, we need we first need to find the partial the partial sum as we said sn before i do so let me make the make the following observation one divided by n times n plus one uh, we can use partial fraction decomposition for this uh, i hope you remember it from the previous chapter partial fraction decomposition so here we use partial fraction decomposition Right, and we can see this as some constant divided by n plus some other constant divided by n minus one. It turns out that uh, n plus one, sorry. It turns out that the numerator for n is one, and the numerator for um, n plus one is negative one. Okay. So this is simply equal to 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay. So now let's take a look at um, Sn, the nth partial sum. The nth partial sum looks like, by definition, this is sigma as i goes from 1 to n of a n, which is, which is this term, right? This is an, but this guy now is this guy. They are the same for all n. So I can replace this guy by this guy. So I get 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, correct? Again, I'm, I'm trying to find if the series is convergent. This is not geometric series, so I have to go back to the definition of um, what a when a series converges. And we know that a series converges 
um, if and only if, by definition, the sequence of partial sums, of its own partial sums, is going to be converted. So we need to find uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn, Sn being the, uh, the sum of the first n terms, right? The nth partial sum of the, of the series. We made the observation that the terms here, each term looks like this. We made the observation that this can be decomposed using fraction, uh, partial fractions into this, this difference. Why this observation is useful? Look, let's write the terms. When, when uh, oh, I mean here i, right? Because this is supposed to be a i. I mean here i instead of n. So, look, if i is 1, this becomes 1 divided by 1, so 1, minus, again, when i is 1, that's be, that becomes 1 over 2. Correct? So this is the first term. 1 minus ha half is, is half, right? Well, it's the same thing as if you replace n, uh, here, n by 1. That's, that's going to remain half. Okay. Why this writing is... What's the benefit of writing it this way? Let's keep going. What's the second term of this sum? When i is 2 now. When i is 2, this becomes 1 over 2. And this becomes 1 over 3. Correct? All right. Hope you start seeing that this and this are going to cancel. What's the third term? when i is 3. So when i is 3, this is going to become 1 over 3, which is going to cancel this guy, minus 1 over 4. Correct? Let's write one more time, one more term. Plus, what's the next one, the fourth term, when i is 4? This is going to become 1 over 4, minus 1 over 5 when i is 4, right? Plus, and so on, all the way to the last term when i reaches now the upper bound of the index, n. 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Correct? This is the last term when i reaches the upper bound n. So Sn, which is the sum of the first n terms, looks, looks like this. But take a look at that. One half and negative half cancel each other, right? This and this cancel each other. Um, minus one third and plus one third cancel each other. Minus one fourth and plus one fourth cancel each other. So it looks like the negative, uh, the negative guy shows up before uh, its opposite, before the positive guy, right? Negative one half showed up before the plus half. Negative one third showed up before plus one third. Negative one fourth showed up before the plus one fourth, and the negative one five, one fifth is showing up before the positive one-fifth. So this guy is going to have a companion here who's going to cancel it, right? So this guy is going to have someone here, which is one-fifth, who's going to cancel it. And they're going to keep knocking each other's out until this guy, this is plus one over n, plus one over n. This is the positive guy. And we know that the positive guy appears after its opposite, right? So before that guy, immediately the minus 1 over n shows up, right? So the minus 1 over n shows up right before that, which is going to cancel this guy. And then I'm going to get this one. This one has nobody that cancels it because if, if there is somebody, it's going to be the next one. But we stop here. And this one is the first guy. So we get all these guys cancel each other. And you just 
uh, end up having 1 minus the first term plus the last term. So 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And I hope you see this, this kind of sum is called telescoping sum. And it's called telescoping because it looks like a pirate's co um, collapsing telescope, right? I mean, this whole thing collapses to just 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. All right. So this is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay. So what is this? This is Sn, right? And this is for O n. All right. So Sn is this guy for all n. So at the limit, when n goes to infinity, Sn is going to go to to 1, right? Because that term is going to vanish. this one and and what do we get the sequence of the partial sums of the corresponding series go to one so that's the s in the definition that's the s in the definition what is it that's the s in the definition right that guy and then we say that the series is convergent and it converges actually to this number s. Correct? This is what the definition is. So we, we got that the sequence of partial sums uh, is convergent to 1 and hence therefore the sequence that we had which was 1 divided by n times n plus 1 and n starts at 1 is equal is convergent and its sum is 1 right so this whole this whole thing if you add them up you actually get this one very good All right, so we've finished example eight. Example nine, let me add another uh, page. Okay. Example, example eight. In example 8, we want to show that the harmonic series, the harmonic series is divergent. So we want to show that the harmonic series, this is called summation of 1 over n, this is called um, harmonic series, is divergent. All right, here's, here's a method which is attributed to um, a French scholar whose name is Nicole Orez. Um, here's the technique he used to show that the harmonic series is, uh, is divergent. Use a different color for you. Okay. Um, so he looked at... He looked at S sub powers of 2. So the first one he looked at is S2. Now what's S2? It's the, the sum of the first two terms, right, of the series. What's the first term? 1. And the second term is 1 half. So S2 is 1, half, is one plus 1 half. S4, what's 4? As I promised you, he looked at um, the, the partial sums 
um, uh, that are powers of two. Okay, so he's gonna stop. He's gonna he's gonna stop at powers of two in the big series. Okay. Oops. So this is S four, right? So he's gonna add the first four terms. The first term is one. The second term is one half. The third term is one thirds, and the fourth term is one fourth. And then he's gonna focus on the last two. He's gonna say, okay, this is the same as one plus one half, the first two. And one thirds is bigger than one fourth, right? One thirds is bigger than one fourth. So that guy is gonna be bigger than or equal Okay, bigger than, same thing. Um, one fourth plus one fourth here. You agree with me? And what is this thing? That's the same thing as one plus um, four over four, which is two over two. Correct? And then he's going to keep looking at s sub powers of 2. So the next one is 2 cubed, so s8. So he's going to add the first um, 8 terms. Right. So the fifth term is 1 fifth plus 6 is 1 6, 7, and... One eighth. As we did before, so one third is bigger than or equal to one fourth. That's going to be bigger than or equal to one plus one half plus one fourth plus one fourth, right? And each sumand in the last uh, in the last package here, one fifth, a one sixth, and one seventh. Each of them is uh, bigger than or equal to one eighth. Correct. So each one of them is bigger than or equal to one eighth. So I get one over eight plus one over eight plus one over eight plus one over eight. You agree with me? Okay. And then that's the same thing as saying. One fourth plus one fourth is one half. And one eighth plus itself four times is still one half. Now, what is this? This is one plus three over two. Correct? And so on. He's going to do the same trick for s to power s s sub 2 to power 4. And so on. He's going to find that s to power 2 to power 4 is going to be greater than or equal to uh, 1 plus uh, 4 divided by 2. That's what he's going to what he's going to find. I mean you just do the same thing, right? You just add um, the ninth term and so on, all the way to the sixteenth, and each one of each sumand of the last last package is gonna be bigger than or equal to one over sixteenth, and then you add them up, you're gonna have um, uh, you're gonna keep having these things, and then you're gonna have eight of those guys. So 8 over 16 is going to remain a half. So we're going to pick up 4 of the halves. So they're going to add up to this. And in general, you can show it by induction. Um, we have that s sub 2 to power n is greater than or equal to 1 plus n over 2. This is for all n. Okay. So you can 
probably you're right here i mean how how did i get this for all n well to do this just do it by induction and i encourage you to do it by induction but it's kind of it's i'm not gonna do it because um we've done induction before so it becomes it becomes a repetition okay so now what can you say about what can you say about um, s sub 2 to power n, which is one of the partial sums, right? What can you say about this? Well, as n goes to infinity, that's going to be bigger than or equal to this thing, right? Correct? Because this is true for all n. So at the limit, when n goes to infinity, that's going to remain true. And then what do we get? This is infinity, correct? So what do we get? We get that this guy is going to diverge. Correct? This guy is going to diverge. So this sequence is divergent. is divergent and diverges to plus infinity. So this sequence diverges to plus infinity. So what can you say about the full sequence of all the partial sums? It also diverges because it contains a subsequence that diverges, right? At least it, di it diverges. At least this is what you can say. All right why because i mean this is a sequence we, we discussed this in the last in the last section this is a sequence that contains i mean these guys are part of the full sequence right this is the sequence this is the full sequence of the partial sums and all these entities here are contained here they are part of this full sequence and those guys go to infinity so as such that's gonna diverge it may not diverge to plus infinity now that I thought about it, uh, but at least it diverges. The limit is not going to exist because it contains elements that blow up. Correct? So the, the sequence doesn't cluster anywhere. So you get that Sn diverges. And when, when you get your hand on uh, whether or not this, the sequence of partial sums, whether it diverges or not, you know exactly whether this corresponding series is going to converge or not. Well, since the partial sum diverges, the sequence of partial sum diverges, uh, that sequence, that series, which is the harmonic series, is going to be divergent. So this is going to force the harmonic series to, to diverge as well. Correct? Very good. Okay, so this is this is example eight, right? So we finished example eight. <clears throat> Let's keep going. All right, so this is the next theorem. It goes like this. If the series converges, then the limit of its term is going to go to zero. The limit of its terms is going to go to zero. So if you have if if the series adds up to a finite number, right? If it's convergent, then eventually you're adding by a very small number. So an converges to zero eventually, right? Okay. How does the proof go? Let us n denote the uh, sum of the first n terms. So it's the nth partial sum. And then a n is the difference between s n and s n minus one. Uh, why? Because s n is the sum of the first n terms, and s n minus one is the, the sum of the first n minus one terms. If you chip away the first n minus the sum of the first n minus one terms from the sum of the first n terms, the difference is simply the nth term, which is a n. All right. Now we know that this series is convergent. And this is equivalent to saying that Sn, the sequence of 
uh, partial sums is going to converge by definition. Let's say it converges to S, correct? One of the results in the previous section, uh, this is one of the things we did in class actually, is that um, the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn minus 1 is the same as the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn, and they're both S. As such, now we, since this holds for all n, since this guy holds for all, all n, um, at the limit we're going to have, as n goes to infinity, right, this guy is going to be the limit of the difference, which is the difference of the limits here, right, remember? Now we can split them up, this is one of the limit laws that we learned in the previous section, um, but each one of them is s. So this becomes s minus s, which is zero. So if a series converges, then um, its terms are gonna decrease, are gonna are gonna go to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay. Remember, for a series, we have two associated se sequences: the sequences made up of its terms, the ans, and the sequence made up of the the partial sums, Sn's. What we're saying is the An is going to go, the sequence An, the sequence of its terms, is going to go to zero. Right? That's what we're saying. Be careful here. The converse of this theorem is not true. Meaning, if the terms of a sequence go to zero, of a series go to zero, then the series may not may or may not converge, and we know a sequence like this, right? We just we just talked about that se uh, that series, uh, the harmonic series. Harmonic series, its terms go to zero, one over n go to zero, as n goes to infinity. However, that series is not convergent, as we just showed before in example eight. Correct. All right. So be careful, um, it's a one direction only, it's a left to right. The series being converges forces the an go to go to zero. The converse is not true. Equivalently, this theorem says, if this fails, then this, it's, logically speaking, this is also gonna fail, right? Uh, if the limit is not zero, if the limit of an is not gonna be zero, then the series is going to be divergent. This is so. This theorem is equivalent to this theorem. They're equivalent, and this one has a name. It's uh, it's referred to as the test for divergence. So again, it's it's equivalent to that. If this fails, so if this limit is not zero, then the series is going to be is not going to be convergence uh, convergence. So it's going to be divergent. Okay. Take a look at example nine. Show that the series is divergent. Well, by the test for divergence, uh, that series is divergent because uh, the limit of the ans is one fifth here, right? So the limit of an, that's an, right, is equal to one fifth. Correct. Um, we know how to take limit of a sequence. The corresponding function here, x squared divided by five x squared plus four, and that goes to one fifth as x goes to infinity. So the sequence is going to go to one fifth as well. Then, which is not zero. Then, um, this series is divergent by the test for divergence. Right? Okay. Let's go to the last theorem in this section. Let's suppose we have two series. Uh, the first uh, has its terms labeled as an, the second as bn, and both of them are convergent. Then, what we get from this theorem is the series made up of multiplying 
um, the terms of one of those convergence series by a scalar and number that's going to also be convergent and it's not going to converge to some crazy thing it's going to converge exactly to alpha times um, uh, the value of the series the a n the series made up of the a n a n terms correct and the series made up of the sum of the uh, terms of the convergence series a n and b, b n that's going to also be convergent and it's going to be convergent to uh, the sum of the two series okay similarly for the difference all right so these properties that you see in this theorem um, follow from the corresponding limit laws that we learned from the previous section uh, 9.1 if you would like to see the proof of any of these, also just uh, just let me know via uh, posting on uh, creating a form to that to that effect on Canvas. All right. Example ten. I'm not gonna do this one. I'm just gonna say that uh, and let gonna just give you the ingredients and let you finish it on your own. Find the sum of the series uh, made up of these terms. Well. This is an immediate application of the previous theorem, namely the one I'm just uh, hovering my cursor over. Uh, this is, I mean, look at the series, sigma 3 over n, n plus 1. You can push the scalar, right? Ignore the 3 for a moment. Uh, sigma 1 over n divided by n plus 1. We know the series. This is a familiar series. This is the telescoping series, series we found before. And we found that this is actually convergent to 1. Remember this? That's convergent to 1. So this series here converges to... Um, the first part converges to 3. And the second part, the series 1 over 2n... Uh, this is a, a geometric series whose first term is one half and the common ratio is one half. So that's going to converge to one. So that's going to be at the end of the day three times the telescoping series, which is um, which is one. So three times one, which is three plus the sum of the geometric series, which is 1. So that's going to be 3 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 4. So the sum here is going to be 4. All right. I'm just going to let you uh, complete the details on your own. Uh, and lastly, a quick comment. A finite number of terms doesn't affect the convergence or divergence of a series. For example, if you know that this sum is finite, which means converges. So the series that starts at some number n naught, and that number is where the index n starts from. So this means that the series uh, um, made up of terms that look like a n, where n starts at n zero, so n equal n zero all the way to infinity. If you know that this is going to converge, this is a finite sum, then the full series, this one, is also convergent. Why? Because what's the difference between this series and this series? They're almost the same, up to adding these finite, finite numbers, a finite sum, right? This is a finite sum. This is not an infinite series. Um, this is the sum of the first n0 minus first term. Right? This is the sum of the first n0 minus 1 term. If, if this thing is convergence, if this, if this thing is convergent, if this is a finite sum, you add, to it, you add to something a finite thing that remains finite. Right? This is why the full series is going to converge. 
So I'm going to summarize it like this. If the tail of the series, I'm going to think about this as the tail of the series. If the tail of the series is convergent, meaning from some rank onward, uh, that series is going to converge. Then the full series is also convergent because the difference between the two is only um, finitely by adding finite, finitely many terms. Okay. All right, so this is the last comment, and this is the end of this uh, section.